Hi everyone, this is Tracy with the Rhapsody Art Barn and let's talk paint today. So does it matter what kind of paint you use? It does. Does it matter if it's a chalk style of one brand and a chalk style of another one? Not too much usually. It does matter if it's an all-in-one, meaning if it has a primer or a top coat or both in it and how it behaves. I talk about this a lot to people who come into my shop and I'm just gonna put out a video kind of talking a little bit about that as I paint something. So today I'm painting my, see it, see that stain? My lampshade, it's old, it's ugly. You should have seen the lamp before I painted it. This was the lamp that I had to redo and I loaded it up with two different types of paint. I used the Dixie Belle paint I carry and the DIY paint I carry. And I also added a little texture medium, a little salt wash. And I'll show you at the very bottom here. I didn't do the staining over the top of this. So you can see all those layers, those crusty, rusty layers that I've kind of covered up up here with a pine cone is the color, brown wash. You can see after you wash it, it mutes down the colors, but down here, that's what it started out as. And the lamp itself originally was slick. It was a very shiny. She was a native looking lady with um, shiny brown skin, a painted face and bright, bright green, almost like, um, I mean, brighter than emerald green acrylic paint on her hair. So she's transformed quite a bit into more of a, as you can see, a muted down rusty piece, like a statue more looking. So right here you'll see, I covered the whole piece in black DIY little black dress mixed with salt wash, which is a texture additive and DIY paint has a real good clay-based stickability to your um, pieces as it is. But the salt wash affirms that anything you put it over, slick items especially, it will stick to. So it's got a nice good stick base. After that, I sanded her down really well so that she'd have a smoother, didn't get this to stay on yet, but it's got a screw there, sorry. <clears throat> so so it, it made it smoother to the touch because that salt wash that you put into things will really bump it up, really brings that texture in. So I smoothed her down. So now when I touch her, she's nice and smooth, even though she's got a lot of texture going on in there. Then I added several different layers of paint on top of the DIY paint. I added some Dixie Belle uh, mermaid tail, some Dixie Belle terracotta. I added some DIY in the, I think that's vintage linen, I can't remember, but a white base, maybe crinoline, might be crinoline. Um, I did just a little bit of, of uh, aging with all these things, some, some Dixie Belle, um, rusty nail under ter the terracotta and then a little bit of the DIY in the mint chip. So I just added a whole lot of layers and I'm going to go back to this little area where you can barely see. You can see some of that turquoise and the mint green and the rusty nail with the terracotta over it coming back through and then of course the white here which is a DIY paint. Okay so you can mix paints together. These are both chalk style. One's a clay base and one's a chalk mineral based. You can mix the paints together. That's okay. Don't worry about it. You will get different effects sometimes. And sometimes that's cool. And sometimes you can even mix an all in one paint in with the chalk style paint just to get those not blending together effects. Sometimes it puts spots throughout stuff. Sometimes it like doesn't doesn't blend smoothly and it kind of creates a rubbing look 
sometimes you can get some really cool effects when you mix two paint styles together. So don't be afraid to try it, but always try it off your piece first if you don't know what it's gonna do. Okay, so with my little lampshade here, I'm gonna get some Dixie Belle drop cloth. That's the color, drop cloth. And I just have it in a little condiment bottle. But you know, if you don't use this paint all the time, putting them in the first in, first out bottles isn't always helpful. Because if you're gonna not use it all the time, sometimes you end up just hurting yourself by having to clump through all the paint. Because it does dry out, any bottle that you use, it will dry out. So I typically mist my brush. I've got a Dixie Belle mini angle today. You want a fine brush when you're doing these kinds of projects. Uh, a really good quality synthetic brush that is and the Dixie Belle ones are a little smoother than some um, I do like different paint brushes for different paint so this is Dixie Belle paint I'm going to use the Dixie Belle brush so I am literally going to use this as kind of a wash and a paint in one which means I add water to my project sometimes I add it to my brush sometimes I add it to my paint and if it's still not watery enough, you can mix in your paint into some water and create a wash. This one I want a little bit thicker. It's got some stains to cover, and I really want that nice, smooth, painted on look. More than a wash, I want it to grab some of the paint um, thickness, texture, and add that. So don't be afraid to mess with your um, your lampshades. Change the color, update them. A lot of people are turning those gold lampshades of the, you know, I don't know, 2000s, I guess, into a white crisp, more modern. And you can even add paper, which I've done on my, my lives. You can go back and look on my paper to them. And I may even add some paper to this one. I haven't decided yet. And if I do, I'll film that as well. Here is the paper. And I'm just not sure if it's too busy for this lady yet. I haven't really decided on her. But it sure is a beautiful paper. But I did wash her with the pine cone is the color, that brown. So it would match that paper if I decide to use it. So if your brush starts to drag as you're painting, that means you need more water. You need more water in, like I said, the paint or on the brush or on the project itself. So as you can already see, it's brightening, lightening, and covering some of those spots, some of those areas. And it does put on a nice smooth coat It'll rough up that texture right now. So you're gonna see that as I brought it in close, some extra texture, and when it dries, it should dry pretty smooth. You can always rub your sandpaper. 220 grit is what you use when you wanna smooth out chalk style paint, especially this paint, this Dixie Bell paint. And this does not need to be sealed. Most of your chalk style paints will cure on their own within 30 days, but they will leave a finish on furniture that you can scratch and show a little bit of chalkiness. Not scratch the paint off, just scratch a texture into the paint. So you just want to be aware of that if you don't seal your piece. One of the easiest ways to seal this chalk style paint is a spray wax that Dixie Belle has called Easy Peasy. It cures in just six hours. It's the fastest curing. It's the lightest top coat. And it might be what I end up using on my stone over here. I don't want it to be shiny. I want it to look like stone. And I want it to be sealed so people can touch it. But I don't really care if it's sealed as hard as a tabletop. If you're talking tabletops, my favorite sealer on any of this paint that I'm using is the DIY Big Top Sealer for a permanent, very durable finish. It's my favorite durable finish top coat. 
my favorite of the waxes is also the DIY wax, and that's a true wax. And yes, you can wax over Dixie Bell paint, even with the DIY wax. However, the DIY wax is a true wax, meaning it's made out of canuba and beeswax. And so, what, unlike the Dixie Bell wax that is not made out of, it is water-based wax, basically. It's a very unusual because it's water-based it performs differently than the Dixie Bell wax. So I typically stick with Dixie Bell wax over my Dixie Bell projects. And the DIY wax is beautiful on the DIY paint. But just so you know, any wax that you use has to be re-waxed. They typically last in a high traffic area six months to a year the pieces and you should be re-waxing even your furniture and like I said I carry a spray wax that makes it easy it's almost like cleaning your furniture that way rather than um, re-waxing with a brush and a true wax so however it's easy for you to do if you have the wax re-wax your pieces so this is about halfway done, so I can show you on the lamp how it's going to look. Of course, it's not dry yet. I am getting clumps in my bottle, like I said. Even I, who use this quite a bit, will get clumps of paint as it dries because nothing is airtight. Even the FIFO bottles, which I have those. I have the flip top bottles. You know, so I'm showing you here. See the, that dark? dark spot. I'm going to try to eliminate that dark spot with paint. And I will show you and get enough paint on my brush here. How oh, it's just going to paint right over it. See and eliminate that. That is not enough paint. That is not smooth. Look at this side. That is done. That is enough paint. Okay. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to stick it back on here just for a second so you can see the difference. Let's put you down here. Here is the piece, here is the painted portion, here is the not painted portion. You can see where it's still dirty and where I'm trying to get rid of those spots. I'm doing an extra coat there on those stains, but look at how beautiful just putting a coat of paint on there is. Okay, so try to answer all your questions, but if you do have more, please, you can Write them in the comment below. Go to Facebook, because I'm on live there every Sunday at three, and visit me on www.rhapsodyartbarn.com to get more products and information. You can always reach out to me if you have questions. So thanks for watching, and go paint something, go make something beautiful today. See you next time, bye.